James McGuire here at Celesphere 25. We're talking about process mining and process intelligence and how these technologies drive change in the enterprise. To discuss that, I'm joined by Will Vanderelst, chief scientist at Salonis and one of the original creators of process mining. Will, good to talk with you today. It's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So I think it's really interesting about process mining in that it was originally created before AI was used in the enterprise quite a bit, and now it's very much used with AI in the enterprise. Yeah. So how has the definition changed with, with the years and as it now works with AI hand in yeah. hand? Yeah. Uh, I think it's a very good question. So I, I started working on process mining in the late 90s, wow. right? Okay, now you, you uh, are true one of the original creators, right? Yeah, so, yeah? So, so, okay. so, 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 so like me and my team back then in Eindhoven, uh, like for the first 10 years, we were basically alone. Like the only <laughs> right. people doing the, 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 no, these types no, of things. No one had heard of it at that point. Nobody had heard of it. There were no, there were no companies doing this, mm -hmm. uh, et cetera, et cetera. Also, I interesting, very little research. Although right. it is very logical to combine data and processes. Of course. Right? It's, it's, it's a no-brainer that should. But typically, people are either data focused or process focused right. and, and like with process mining we brought these two let's say uh, areas together mm -hmm. you were asking about the definition of process mining right and i think in my initial thinking about it it was already very broad uh -huh. uh, and so so uh, today we often talk about process intelligence but I would say that my original definition of process mining was already including these types of things. Oh, so, even, even back in the late 90s? Uh, so just uh, as an example, so if you look at things like uh, you're working on a case and you would try to predict when the case is finished. Sure. Or you're handling a customer and you would like to look at the probability that the customer is going to churn or not. Right. Uh, typical business uh, question. Typical questions that, that have a predictive uh, factor in it. Or mm -hmm. uh, there is a choice in the process and you want to, uh, to find out which are now the customers that go left and which are the ones that go right. Sure. So all of these questions were already there 20 years ago and there were also the first algorithms there. Hmm. Right? So, so, so this type of thinking is not something completely new. Mm -hmm. I would recommend many people that are interested in the history yes. of, of the field to also look at the Process Mining Manifesto, uh -huh. which came out uh, the same year that Salonis was founded. And if you look at the Process Mining Manifesto, that was then written by, let's say, the group of experts working on, on, on this topic. Sure. And if you read it, it's like a very broad uh, uh -huh. setting. Okay. Of course, the reason why we are now probably often using, uh, let's say, the term process intelligence is to distinguish it a bit from, let's say, uh, I would say, the limited implementation of process mining in many other tools. Yes. Right? In many other tools, right. it is reduced to, I don't know, just creating a directly follows graph and that's it. Well, it's right? sometimes called data mining, probably, in, in, yeah. in other situations. As a, so, so the data mining, of course, did not have process models in them, right? 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 So process mining... Also in the tools that are not so powerful, like I think they are really process oriented. So in that sense, it is different from data mining. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think many tools uh, kind of got stuck in uh, just showing what is going on without right. predicting what is going to happen or how can we address the problems that, that, that we are facing. So, yes, yes. So, so if you now look at our definition of process intelligence, uh, uh, that has many of the elements of the original definition of process mining, but emphasizes this connection to AI and machine learning, which Correct. is changing the game now completely. Of course, yeah. of course. Well, yeah. there's, a, there's a quote of yours that's pretty well known. It's, you said that data without process context is blind, which makes perfect sense. Yep. But then the question becomes, how do companies move from data analytics to process intelligence in, in a practical sense? How do they really do that in the real world? It's an investment, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's a, I sometimes say it's a way of life, right? You need to really do that. So, so many organizations have many systems in there, and these systems have many, also many tables in them. Mm -hmm. So this is the existing situation, and process mining is like a layer on top of all of these different systems and all of these different uh, processes. And in that way, you get this end-to-end -end perspective on things. And that is an investment, right? You, you sure. need to be willing to, to go that way, but it also has to be completely clear if you're focusing on one activity, you're not going to dramatically improve whatever you're, you're, you're doing. It's right? the entire process. You need to look at 
also often multiple processes that are interacting with each other, etc. Right. etc. So process mining provides the means to do that. And initially, this is hard work. But it's also super naive to think that without providing AI with, with this type of information, that you can be successful. Right. And so, so if you, for example, have a problem, you cannot uh, deliver to your customers in time, mm -hmm. right? You, you look at such a business question, sure. and then you would apply an AI, like you can type it in ChatGPT and it will just generate some, some, some text. Right. Completely unrelated to whatever that you're doing. So if you think about it, it can only be that you get uh, good recommendation or automated actions if you provide it with uh, lots of information because it may be that you're not able to supply your customers because of problems in, in logistics, the problem can be in production, it can be in procurement, etc., etc. Right. And these are the things that you need, these data you need to expose that, and that's the only way that AI can do something meaningful. Yeah. Well, really, it requires a digital twin, or, or not necessarily. Is the digital twin always an important element? Yeah, so, so I think uh, pr like the, the term digital twin is a bit overloaded, okay. I, 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 right. I would say. So clearly, process mining is the technology to create a digital twin. And uh, sometimes we also talk about the digital shadow. Sure. Right? You create a digital image of whatever is happening in your organization. I think the the notion of a digital twin is to try to uh, to automatically take action, right? And and that requires a good digital shadow in order uh, to to be able to do that. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, if there's a CIO or a CEO thinking about investing in process mining or process intelligence, what's what's the first mile for them? The the, the early gain. How, how do they get advantage early on? So, so, so what we often do is, let's say, proof of value hmm. uh, a POV. Uh, 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 concept, right. right? Where it's often amazing, right? And that's, I think, the only way to, to get commitment from companies to, uh, to do that. So this is a shorter project uh -huh. where you, under time pressure, you try to show, okay, if you're now going to apply process mining, this is the potential that you can do. Okay. And that, like in four weeks or so, you, you do something like that and you show the potential. It doesn't mean that the potential is realized, etc. But it gives organization experience and confidence that they can do that. It's a real world demo in essence. But based on the company's data, right? Yes. So, 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 so it's real. Mm -hmm. But of course, to, to then get the benefits, you really need to implement it in a, in a, in a continuous way. So that is the way, uh, let's say, to get companies to see the value of this. Mm -hmm. But I would say that is just a starting point. Hmm. Because to get the real value, I think it's very important to scale process mining. Of course. Yeah. And so sometimes I use... a. Uh, like if I would uh, create uh, data and software to predict uh, the weather next weekend here in Munich, yes, right? It would be very stupid uh, to do all of that if your ambition is just to predict the weather in Munich next week. It's pretty limited. If you want to do that, you want to predict the weather every day and not just in Munich in any city. And I think this example is showing that with process mining, it's very important to scale. And if you look at success stories, like for example, how Mercedes was talking about experiences, but also BMW and many others, mm -hmm. they apply this not to a limited process, they are able to scale. And because you are scaling, your return on investments become much better, mm -hmm. right? Because if you, if you create, uh, you need to build up expertise, you need to, to run the software, and that only makes sense if you apply it as broadly as possible. Right, right. right. There's also that if you would, I don't know, buy a Excel for just one spreadsheet program, <laughs> that would be very stupid. Right? Sure. You buy Excel and you want to apply it uh, to, 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 to lots of spreadsheets. Right. Yeah. It's interesting about process mining and AI agents because they seem to be, you know, go hand in yeah. hand. I mean, yeah. do, you, do you imagine a future or maybe it's an existing situation where AI agents are actually moving through the enterprise, making decisions at a fairly high level? I think these things are partly, perhaps, already happening. Yeah. Depends a bit on how, how you define but, but it. But in combination with process mining? Process oh, of course. No, yeah. no, no, yeah. Of course, of course. So, so uh, like process mining is, is creating this layer on top of existing things that creates transparency. And you can see where the, the different, uh, 
what sometimes we call them execution gaps where the biggest problems are. Sure. And then for every problem, you need to think about, okay, what is now, how, are, how, how am I going to address that problem? Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you see a problem, it's clearly, okay, you need to have an organizational change. In other cases, you may decide, okay, for that recurring problem, I just create an agent that is now handling uh, the, this problem. Very specific. So, so that is already a reality, right? That, that is there. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, uh, as we go forward, I think uh, the expectations of organizations is to, to do these things even more autonomous right. than they were there before. Yeah, yeah. And I think this, this is a process that is ongoing. What I think process mining will do, it will provide the guardrails to do this in a, in a, in a sophisticated and solid way. Hmm. So I, I do not believe in, I don't know, agents that uh, just do stuff sure. without being monitored. And it's very interesting that using process mining, you can see where are the issues. Mm -hmm. You can say, okay, for this issue, now I would like to use uh, so some agent or something else. Mm -hmm. And then you actually implement it, but then you still want to monitor what that agent is doing. Yes. Uh, it's doing often something that is relatively fuzzy, right? Uh, we, we do not often know exactly how they are working, so it's super important to continue to monitor them. Uh, and that's, I think, the way of the future. Well, I think the, the issue of monitoring could be a little challenging in that certainly we can't have humans monitoring, or maybe in some situations we can, but they may be automatically monitoring being monitored because it seems like we, we can't have humans continuously monitoring the agents because then they're not efficient, right? No, no, but, but if you have this process mining layer on top of that, you will, uh, you will be able to recognize anomalies. Uh -huh. and, uh, and like something that is uh, very much underutilized, but like many customers are not using that, but they could have great benefits from that, mm -hmm. is what, what we support in terms of conformance checking. So in so conformance checking, you define the process as it should run in, in the end. Mm -hmm. You continuously, and, and this is not a new technology, it has, has been around sure. for, for, for 20 years, yeah. right? But right. that is really applicable. You can monitor, let's say, all the deviations from the normative process that you have uh, established. Mm -hmm. And you will always need to have some tolerance, right? You, 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 you accept some, some deviations. Right. But if something uh, changes then, right, that you first you did not see that problem and now suddenly it starts to happen, it's an alert. then you alert a human to, yes. to look into that. Yeah, right? yeah. Well, let's look to the future. I mean, what do you see in terms of process mining and AI? Obviously, they're going to work very closely together. They're going to be really merged if they're not already merged. So what do you see, say, in the, in the near to midterm future for the, the future of, of AI and process intelligence? I think we, uh, we are, like, like I was just explaining you, that we have been on a road for already for 25 years. Sure, it's, it's not exactly bad. Uh, no. And we are going into a direction where we get better and better. And so, like if you look at me, what I experienced this year being here at Cellosphere, mm -hmm. uh, I see that uh, object-centric process mining has really arrived, mm -hmm. right? In the past, people would, would question that, it's complicated, etc., etc. It is not complicated. It is simply like a better way to represent reality. Right. So I see that in most organizations, uh, object-centric process mining has arrived. It's really there, et cetera, et cetera. Uh -huh. okay. And that is providing the context needed for AI. Because like, if AI would, would just look at, at something very limited uh, Without having this context, mm -hmm. uh, uh, like you cannot expect too much. And I think that's the gradual development that, that we will see. Mm -hmm. right? Well, lastly, I want to ask you about the WillBot. I heard your, yeah. team, your, your team built an actual WillBot. It's modeled on yourself. Yeah. Um, how, do, how, does, how does the WillBot work? Yeah, so, so these, with, with AI, you can create the technologies where you can basically uh, take a human person, mm -hmm. You video that person, you let that person talk so that they, they know oh. accents, etc. Okay. And then uh, you take that bot and you feed it with lots of, uh, let's say, documents. Sure. In, in my case, book or it, it is fed with, with my, my books, my, yep. my articles, etc., etc. Yeah. And then, uh, like that, that, that robot is then, let's say, equipped uh, uh, to give answers, in my case, related to process mining, right? <laughs> so you can kind of scope like what a range of questions is that a robot can, can answer, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So 
I don't know, uh, the, the, the bot cannot be asked about soccer or something like that, <laughs> or right? That, uh, it doesn't give your opinions on soccer? But, uh, because then you would need to feed it the documents that would right. express my opinions about that, and okay. that, that's not in the context. So, so that's, that's also, like, it makes it also a bit safe, right? That it's not going sure. outside of the context of where it's, it's trained for. Right. And then it's uh, what I find most fascinating of this tech, that technology, like, like I, uh, I just speak, uh, I don't know, three languages, oh. uh, I like Dutch, English, and German. Uh, but with this technology, I can speak any language, oh. right? I can speak Chinese, Korean, whatever. Okay. And I think this is fascinating that, I don't know, people, I don't know, in Korea, China, Japan, all over the world, can... I don't know, interact with me, ask me questions in their own natural language. And it's very funny to <laughs> that, hear me then talk in, that is, in this I guess other the, language. The nature of the translation, I hope the translation is yeah. accurate, but it's yeah. Yeah, yeah. interesting, that's yeah. fascinating. Yeah, that, 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 that's a part where I see really, uh, let's say, lots of use cases that you can kind of customize a personal experience, mm -hmm. like in the language and in the setting that is there. And yeah. I think that that makes it very interesting. Hmm. And so, so, and so, for example, think about... Uh, Manuals of software. Nobody right. reads manuals no, of software. No. We all hate that, of right? Course. right? Because we always say, uh, uh, "I don't want to read the just, manual. Just I just want to have an answer." Of course. And this is, like, this is the type of technology that will make this possible. That you 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 have a question, for example, about the software product, and you ask the question in natural language, in your own language, and you get an answer. So right? much easier than a manual. Yeah. 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 And it's also much so much better than typing. Of right? course, just talk yeah. with it. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, I think you said it's a lot of good material. I've learned a lot. Thank you so much Thank for talking to us today. It was great. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you.